Okay, hello everybody. Uh, welcome to my kitchen. Somebody recently asked me how I make my hydroponic setup. Um, it is a deep water culture hydroponic setup. I use three inch nut cups, hence a three inch hole saw. Uh, what I'm using for my containers this time is going to be these as you can see it says food safe four gallon square buckets with a lid from Menards the I think these uh, with the lid it cost me like four bucks uh, this whole setup at the end you could set up probably uh, I'm gonna say three maybe four buckets uh, for about 50 bucks not counting water and nutrients in your plants but the system itself about 50 bucks which is really, really cheap. If you look up the place, uh, prices online for these pre-made systems, and they're really not much different than what I'm doing here. Basically, uh, what you need, you're gonna need your bucket. You're going to need a 5 16th uh, regular drill bit, or as I'm using here, a brad tip drill bit. A hole saw that accommodates the size of the net cup that you're going to use or a way to make your hole. In the top of the bucket, in the lid, this one is going to hold one plant and as you've seen the uh, center is already set up for me. So we just go like this till we get in then reverse it. Make sure you're holding it with your uh, legs and stuff. And there's your three inch hole, which fits perfectly to your three inch net cup. Now, because it is deep water culture, you are also going to need a hole for your airline. Because you have to be able to get these plants oxygen. You're not doing a cracky, well, you can, but. And the same setup will work with a cracky. You just don't, uh, don't put the air hole in the side for the airline. Uh, let me see here. I'm gonna set this up. My net cup's gonna come down to almost to the bottom of that lip. So I know I can safely knocking some dishes into the sink. <laughs> I know I can safely um, Make sure it's straight. Put the hole anywhere really above that mark right there where the um, net cup ended. If you want it to go in, okay. I mean, I want my handle. I'm gonna actually probably pop these handles off if I can. It looks like I can. So, uh, I think I'll just make this my back. Nice little handy uh, spot for it too. Right in the middle there. Just pick a spot. Oh, forgot to turn it back to four. And there you have a hole for your airline. Okay. And uh, that's the end of that step. Also, real briefly, if you're going to use this container for more than one uh, plant, this one I'm currently going to be using for my hot lemons. I have two of them. So as you see, I cut two holes. Also, my airline hole. What I did was I placed my three inch net cup upside down on the lid. And she bought right here. And as you can see, I put four little marks around it with a permanent marker, centered the hole saw, made my holes. That simple. Just uh, if you're going to put more than one plant in here, make sure that uh, it's going to accommodate it. Or four or however many. This is only 10 inches across. 
So I wouldn't recommend putting more than probably two in here. Make sure that they're the same so you don't accidentally cross pollinate. Unless it doesn't matter, then just grow. But there you are, a deep water culture hydroponic bucket. And next we will discuss setting it up. Okay, and then the next step, uh, I added, this is a four gallon container as I told you before. I added three gallons of uh, reverse osmosis water, which came up literally right, perfectly right here. Uh, I will show you the reason why I use reverse osmosis water. One tool you're going to need is a PPM meter or a TDS meter, whatever you want to call it. Turn that on. Look at that reading. Does it say like four? Yeah, four. A reading of four. That's it, just four. So that's where we're starting at. Uh, almost just pure clean water. Pretty much nothing in it. Uh, the pH doesn't really matter until we're done. Got a couple of things to add first. First, I am in my vegetation stage. So I'm going to be using up the last of my Fox Farm vegetation hydroponic nutrients. Uh, these work really well. Uh, I am going to be switching to some other stuff though here soon once this is gone. For three gallons of water. Uh, let me see, where's my little cup at? Where did I set that little cup? Yeah, here we are. Okay. For three gallons of water, I'm going to add about 12 and a half milliliters, which is two and a half teaspoons to the water. Rinse out my little cup. And you're going to want to make sure it's well mixed. You want to let your nutrients settle in for about a minute or so. Make sure it's, you, you want it to be very, very well uh, mixed in, diluted, whatever you want to call it. Because you don't want it to be adjusting a pH that's not stable. So we're going to mix that in real well here like that. Then the next thing to add is uh, something for some explosive root growth and it helps make the nutrients more available to the plant. Uh, I've had uh, very, very good experiences with this product. It does not affect the PPMs or the pH at all. Just to show you, PPMs are at 271, 278, right about there okay my goal is roughly 300 when I'm done anywhere between 3 and 400 is fine but I add roughly 2 milliliters per gallon that's what it says on the back but we're going to go that is 1 milliliter 2 three, four, five, and six. You want to make sure your pipe bed or whatever you're using is rinsed out just like the cup before. Oh, I didn't show you the pH before. Whatever. Just trust me. Don't change. And we're going to mix this in though. Just watch me add six milliliters. Just over a teaspoon, 1.2 teaspoons, and the PPMs are still at about 280, just under 280. So as you see, it does not affect the water at all, but it definitely helps. Okay, so our PPMs are about where we're at. We got our nutrients in there. We got our HydroGuard root stimulant in there. 
Uh, now it's time to check the pH, in which you will need a pH meter, or if you have to do it manually, uh, that's fine as well. This is a lot more accurate though. Our pH is currently, let's see where it settles in at. Yeah, it looks like it's about four even. It's not at all where we want it. We want it about 6.5, 6.7, somewhere near. So we're gonna shut that off and cap it. <clears throat> Grab some uh, pH up. And my pipette. Uh, I'm going to add, let me see, that says at four. I think there's about one milliliter, two milliliters, three milliliters. Not all nutrients work out the same. Uh, this particular set of nutrients that I'm using has a pH stabilizer in it. So for whatever reason, when I uh, add my nutrients, my pH drops drastically. It's usually a little over seven out of the jug. Get that good and well mixed in. Grab our pH meter. And now we are at, this around a little bit, about a 6.1 ish so we gotta bring it up just a little more up this time I'm only going to add uh, let me think we added what three milliliters last time and it moved up two so this time I'm going to go uh, about 0.6 milliliters Roughly, <laughs> it's not an exact uh, measurement. But that should get us pretty, pretty darn close. Check it again. I'd say that, that is acceptable. All right, and with that, we will be moving on to the next step, which is very simply setting your grow bucket up under your light. You want to Feed your airline through your hole. Grab a clean air stone so that you are not transferring any algae, bacteria, larva, or whatever other stuff can get in there. Dip it in the water just a touch so it gets wet. Slides on real nice that way. Drop it in there. Uh, let's see if that's the right valve. Yep, it certainly is the right valve. Turn on your little uh, valve there. Set your lid on top. I'm not locking mine on top because I want to be able to lift them uh, freely without having to jerk it around. Take your plant from your existing, uh, I guess you could call it your uh, sprout jar or whatever. Pull your old air stone off. You can clean that out by soaking it in hydrogen peroxide. Set your uh, I'll make sure that airline is shut off. Set it in there like so. And that's about it right there. See you guys next time.